the Arctic Ocean, five and a half million square miles of sea and ice. One of the most dangerous places on Earth. But every year, an extraordinary team of skydivers carve out an airport just 20 miles from the North Pole. Beside it, an oasis springs up in this frozen desert, Ice Camp Barnea. Five-star Arctic hotel. <laughs> the camp is a magnet for people with big dreams. I've just been dipping my boot at the end of the runway. <laughs> <laughs> Marathon runners. You're so tired, you don't know where you are, you don't know who you are, but you want to die. Yeah. Champagne tourists. It's a long drive contest, apparently. And international scientists. It's sort of like a God made you a laboratory right out in the perfect spot. Amateur adventurers go in search of the ultimate experience. It's just like walking into a different world that you never would have dreamed or prepared for. We could be going to absolute carnage. <laughs> They have just three weeks to pursue their Arctic dreams before Barnea melts into the sea. <laughs> this is one season at the world's most extreme outpost. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the Arctic Ocean! It's late March. Flying above the frozen surface of the Arctic Ocean, a Russian crew searches the ice. They're looking for a site to build an airport. Finding the perfect sheet of ice, strong enough to support the landing of a 30-ton cargo jet, is not easy. This piece of ice they choose from the helicopters. Three days of flying flying around the North Pole to find this piece of ice to build the runway. Each year, the Russian Geographic Society sponsors the building of an extraordinary outpost on the ice, around 25 miles from the North Pole. They call it Barneo. As much of the ice sheet melts in summer, Barneo must be rebuilt from scratch every year. <laughs> Once a site for the airport is found, the only way down is by parachute. The lowest speed of that plane is uh, 300 kilometers per hour, which is quite fast. So when you're jumping out, uh, you have to hit the blast with that speed, 300 kilometers. <laughs> Two bulldozers, drums of fuel, food and tents for the crew are also airdropped into position. In temperatures of 40 degrees below zero, the team must create a runway like no other in the world. There's a really deep snow from half meter to up to one meter snow, and for our tractor it's uh, really hard to move the snow away our team has to chop the ice because the ice was not smooth so we were chopping manually and using the chainsaws while the team get to work Barneo's guests are gathering 600 miles to the south Longyearbyen, on the Norwegian island of Spitsbergen, is the most northerly town in the world. Every year, hundreds of scientists, adventurers and tourists fly in, waiting here until Barneo is open for business. Among the first to arrive this season are a group of office workers from the UK. They'll be attempting a trek to the pole for 
charity. I'm really looking forward to it now. Now we've actually got here, it's taken a long time to get here. Uh, we're really looking forward to it. I understand it's <laughs> minus 40 up where we're going, so uh, yeah. it's going to be a challenge and an effort. <laughs> I'm clearly the only idiot that's turned up without a jacket. <laughs> This far north, the temperature only hits 7 degrees centigrade in the height of summer. Today, it's a chilling minus 20. It's very cold, yes. So we've got a big thing ahead of us, haven't we? And um, we are just six ordinary guys. If someone had told me when I was a boy, you know, I'd be going on a trip to North Pole, I would have had a heart attack. I was born sort of on the back of the Britwell estate in Slough. So the North Pole might as well be the moon. That, for me, is just a boy who dream come true, really. Around 500 people from 15 countries will go to Barneo this year. A large group of Japanese tourists have booked to fly from Barneo to the Pole by helicopter. They're on a tight schedule. Yes, we are very exciting. <laughs> just two days in North Pole. <laughs> Also making preparations in Longyearbyen is Barneo's boss, Misha Malakoff. Future omelette is prepared here. Misha was made a hero of Russia for his pioneering Arctic expeditions. There's not much he doesn't know about the ice. The most difficult moment for a person who would like to go to the North Pole, it's just decision. I'm doing it. It's so unique, North Pole greatest uh, feelings uh, what they can experience uh, in all their life. In all polar expeditions, uh, the uh, most important person, not the boss. Not the cook. <laughs> Who keep uh, uh, people uh, happy. Everything here in Longyearbyen is ready to go. Okay. Misha okay. calls the runway team to check on progress up on the ice. Пока, пока, удачи. Yeah, actually, uh, not nice news from one uh, side. Uh, unfortunately, snow uh, this season is uh, a little bit harder and uh, uh, thicker than we expected. The runway team are struggling. It's minus 40, colder than usual, which limits the time the crew can work. The ice is old, which makes it extremely tough. It's taking longer than planned to cut and level. The airstrip is falling behind schedule. Back in Longyearbyen, news of the delay is causing concern for Barneo's waiting customers. My team is expected to fly in on the third, and that gives us 10 days to make the pole. So every day we're delayed on the runway being constructed is, a, is an extra you know, 10 miles we have to make on our, on, our, on our project. Alan Chambers is a former Marine commander who now works as an expedition guide. He's been hired along with team doctor Ed Coates to lead the group of British office workers safely to the North Pole. It's going to be interesting to see which characters really flourish and come out of the woodwork or people who go quiet. I like the call because it strips everybody and you get to, get to work with a real honest character of the people. It'll be hard for all of us, won't it? But after me, having a good chat with Ed, the doctor, he's been to the South Pole, he's been around here, and Alan, this is his 10th trip to the North Pole. They, they inspire confidence. <laughs> when you're a kid, you dream of these things. Oh, I'd love to go to the North Pole. We're off, we're going. More and more people pour into Longyearbyen, eager to start their Arctic adventures. With 24 hours of daylight during the Arctic spring, the runway team have been working in shifts around the clock to get it finished. It's three days late, but finally the airstrip is ready to receive its first flight. The airport at Longyearbyen is a hive of activity. The Russian crew are preparing for the first flight of the season to the newly created ice airport at Barnea. 
but they're three days behind schedule and the strain is beginning to show. Actually, it's organized very well, but because it's our first flight in this season, it takes a lot of pressure, you know, and a lot of, maybe not a lot, but a little stress. Margarita is in charge of flight operations. We are taking right now the uh, big um, uh, tent for the people uh, and the kitchen that we can start to prepare some food. Before any paying guests can fly north, Barneo's crew must first build the camp. A bewildering array of equipment is needed to support a community on the ice. TV set, tables, these are uh, beds, generators, food, and toilets. Important stuff uh, even in... Uh, oh, sorry, it's closed. first flight of the season is in the air. Barneo's boss, Misha, can finally head out to the ice. No, I feel uh, very excited. Uh, for four years I haven't seen this uh, uh, ice. And for me, each meeting with ice is uh, always uh, a big emotion. And uh, I have a feeling I'm flying back home. These people will be already their 10th season on ice. Believe me, one month on ice, uh, like uh, uh, six months uh, in normal life. <laughs> After two hours flying north over the frozen Arctic Ocean, the extraordinary ice runway comes into view. The ice is little more than a meter thick. No one is certain it'll withstand the landing of the 30-ton jet. The successful landing is a great relief to the runway builders. Today we received our incredible Antonov 74 plane, so the crew is in good mood now. Sasha is Barneo's number two and supervised building the runway. That's my fourth season here on Barneo. I discovered for years that uh, it attracts good people. The Arctic is my uh, favorite place. The ground team must now hurry. The pilot keeps the engines running as the extreme cold could prevent them from restarting. The Antonov heads back to Longyearbyen. It'll soon return with the first paying customer. Barneo's crew have just a couple of days to build a working town on the ice. It will be an airport, a hospital, a hotel and a fuel station. In one of the most inhospitable places on the planet, Barneo will be the essential lifeline that keeps the visitors safe. In Longyearbyen, ex-Marine Allen is putting his team of charity trekkers through their paces. It's his final chance to assess their skills before they hit the ice. Who's the guy off um, South Park? Is it South Park? George Clooney. Penny. Penny. First, Allen must talk them through their unfamiliar kit. The main difference we've got here, you can see they've got skins on. Synthetic skins, right? So originally they were made out of seal skin in the olden days, and it's like stroking a cat, it's really soft one way, and then the hair sticks in when you go the opposite way. So it gives you that traction to shuffle forward, and even on a 45 degree, you've got no problem, you won't slip back. Never skied, I've, I've done snowboarding, but um, not done skiing. But this isn't like skiing, is it? It's sort of walking with bits of wood on your feet, it's not skiing. Brian has even less experience. Today is his first time on skis. Alan, why are these so sharp? So they can stick into the ice. OK. The whole key is to get the balance transfer right in the sliding. It's, re it's really hard the first time you put skis on. So, um, <laughs> you guys got their, got their work cut out.
Have you got any stabilizers? The whole team are struggling, but property manager Brian is finding it hardest of all. Horrendous time on the skis. I understand it's it's meant to be an easy way to travel across the ice, um, but I just I just just can't get it at the moment. And I was just frustrated, like how at not being able to do it. You stay off that path. Brian's had enough and heads back to the apartment. It's good for me to get the measure of the tolerance anyway. You know, one tooth mistakes, people get upset. You just got to watch for these things when we get out there. It's only going to get harder. In Long Yipin's most expensive hotel, the Japanese tourists are counting on a gentler route to the pole. They've each paid around £25,000 for a luxury Barneo experience. They'll be flown straight to the top of the world in a helicopter. But for the last two days, they haven't made it past reception. We want to go to North Pole, but the weather is no good, so we are waiting here. And uh, tomorrow, we want to go to the North Pole. Yes, tomorrow. Tomorrow we are going to North Pole. Six hundred miles north, the hard work of Barneo's crew has paid off. The heated tents are in place, and the ice camp is taking on a village atmosphere. This is the main entrance to the Barneo station. Different flags, Barneo flag, Russian flag, and so many others. We have two mess rooms, one for crew and one for clients. And between the mess rooms, it is the cold storage, and opposite to that, it's a kitchen. And these are our accommodation tents. They are heated, and they have canvas beds, and with sleeping bags. And we can accommodate up to 12 persons on each tent. Five-star Arctic hotel. <laughs> There's also a medical tent, two helicopters on permanent standby, a generator room to provide electricity, and the most northern toilet in the world. But the washing facilities are pretty basic. No hot showers here, just an invigorating rub down with snow. With the final bits of kit moved into place, Ice Camp Barneo is ready to open its doors for business. A new day, and the British charity trekkers are about to set foot on the frozen Arctic Sea for the first time. It's a long way from Birmingham for scrap metal dealer Paul. It's just so different, isn't it? Phenomenal. Look at the, look at the scenery. Look at this. Come on in. Get close together, yeah? This is as far removed from me as, as can possibly be. And I think that's why I'm doing it. I think as you get older, men especially, I think they get a bit strange and do weird things to sort of reaffirm their vitality. And there's nothing much more extreme you can do to sort of reaffirm life than put your life in danger. Each team member will drag a 60 kilo sled. They're packed with tents, food, cooking equipment and extra clothing. But before they set off for the pole, they must check in with operations director, Misha. He's responsible for their safety, and everyone has to play by his rules. We have to check in every night uh, between 8 and 10. If we don't check in between 8 and 10, it has to be between 8 and 9. And the following morning, if we don't check in, they send the helicopter out. And Alan gets fined. Big star for it. The area around the North Pole is uniquely dangerous. Although the pole itself does not move, the ice and everything on it is in constant motion. This is a, a, a North Pole and 90 degrees east. 
Barneo started from uh, this point. For last uh, five days, uh, we moved uh, from 95 degrees to uh, 55 degrees. Every day uh, we are doing seven kilometers. Just for your understanding. Uh, uh, Ten is floating it. Seven kilometers a day, which is unbelievable. So the runway is moving, the camp's moving, the toilets are moving. Everything is moving at seven kilometers a day. So that affects where we start, how we start. And... Alan will attempt to harness the drift of the ice to speed his inexperienced group north. They'll take a short helicopter ride to a drop-off point east of the camp. If Alan chooses the right spot, the team can use the drifting ice like a conveyor belt to carry them towards the pole. He's got all the skis on, got all the sledges packed. We're about to take off. So this is the exciting bit. This is what we've been waiting for. The team have set themselves the challenge of a 60-mile trek across the frozen ocean to the pole. They hope to complete their journey in seven days. It's a serious test. They have no experience on ice. It's minus 28 degrees centigrade. They're now alone in the harshest climate on Earth. When that helicopter took off and it was just deadly silent, and there was eight sledges, eight guys, you could see fear in some of their eyes. They realised then what they'd undertaken. It was like the loneliest place on the planet. I looked at Brian and his jaw just dropped. He looked devastated. And I thought, what have I done here? Why have I brought these guys out here? Are we going to die? <laughs> <laughs> Team leader Alan decides to ease his group into the challenge and make camp. Alan, is there an easy way to undo these knots? That was the first time we put up a tent in the snow with no help, and it wasn't a very nice experience at all. It's so hard to explain. It's just like walking into a different world that you never would have dreamed or prepared for. It's just so cold. That's all it is. It's just nothing at all except snow. The snow is essential to their survival. It'll be used to make drinks and rehydrate the team's food. In this bitter terrain, they'll consume four times the number of calories that they do back home. Not every visitor to Barnea with dreams of the pole will get there on foot. 20-year-old Johnny is a college student from California. My name's Johnny Strange. I'm an action sports athlete, and I'm here to skydive into the North Pole. I'm trying to skydive in, and if I do that, I'll be the youngest in the world to complete the three poles, which is top of Everest, South Pole, North Pole. Both his parents have scaled Everest, and Johnny has caught their adventure bug. Pretty excited, but getting kind of nervous about the skydive, you know. If everything goes right, it should be good. Because if not, I'm going to smash into the ground. Skydiving onto an ice cap is extremely dangerous. The Russian parachutists who built the runway are military trained. Full-time professionals accustomed to cold weather jumps. In 1997, three tourists died during a jump over the South Pole. Skydiving there is now banned. But at Barneo, anything is possible. You have to be uh, in the right gear, well prepared, and also landing on the ice is difficult. But if they like to do so, we can arrange. Everybody can say, oh, yeah, it's dangerous, you could get hit, hurt, you're an idiot, blah, blah, blah. But everybody, everybody dies, dies eventually, and uh, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to live, live my life to the fullest. For safety reasons, Johnny will jump with two of Barneo's parachutists. His life depends on having a clear plan for the descent. But the Russian jumper doesn't speak English. How high are we going up? Uh, 2,500. 2,500 meters. Okay. And then pull out 1,000 meters? 
1200 разбежка. 1200 20 miles from the North Pole, the ice airport is busy with new arrivals. Camp Barneo opened three days late because of problems building the runway. Operations director Misha must catch up the lost time and squeeze as many groups as possible through Barneo's doors and out to the pole. Yeah, but uh, where are you? Uh, how far are you from North Pole? But you no longer have to be a great explorer to conquer the Earth's summit. If your pockets are deep enough, you can fly straight there. The Japanese tourists are finally getting their dream trip to the top of the world. And paying £25,000 for the privilege buys you a very personal service. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, it's a special place. Probably 20th time I'm in this special place already. Yeah, actually a nice spot here. I'm happy. Without a GPS, there's nothing to show that you're standing at the pole. But the Russian hosts have thought of everything. Camp manager Sasha has a party trick ready for the tourists. Congratulations for visiting the North Pole. In this case, we can cross all the meridians. So in one minute, you can make a round-the-world trip. You can see you can... All lines of longitude converge at the Earth's axis, making the North and South Poles the only places on the planet where it's possible to circumnavigate the globe in under a minute. It's fun. <laughs> we are here in the North Pole making a round-the-world trip and taking pictures. So it's really fun. You can see faces of people. Please They're quite the happy. The tourists' brief time at the pole is up. It's back on the helicopter to Barneo, then straight off to the airport for their onward flight to Japan. Sixty miles south, the British charity trekkers are determined to reach the pole the hard way. Their first night on the ice has been a shock for scrap metal dealer Paul. It's cold. It's so, so cold. Possibly minus 35 last night. Um, the only warm place is your sleeping bag. And when you're in it, you don't want to get out of it. Brian thought he had frostbite the first night in all his fingers because the ends of his fingers had gone black overnight. And I said, Ed, come on, we need to look at this straight away. And um, Ed come back and said, I've had a really good look, and it's just the dye from his gloves had stained his fingers. <laughs> the cold doesn't just make physical demands on the body. A polar expedition is a huge mental challenge. Being on your own, it's not a nice feeling. It's not a, you can understand how Robinson Crusoe felt, but we had friends with us, but it was, it was tough. You do a lot of thinking. You, you've got an awful lot of time to think. Um, mine just wandered back to my family, my wife, my two children, and there's nothing you can do about it. You just got to tough it out. You look. Yeah. Back at Barneo, skydiver Johnny is having a last-minute run-through of his big jump. You count, you, you count. count. One, two, three. Yeah. Well, sorry. One, One, two, two three. Yeah, yeah, sorry, catch. One, two, three. Catch, catch, sorry. He'll make the leap over the North Pole with two of Barneo's hardcore search and rescue parachutists. For Johnny, it's the final piece of what's called the Adventurer's Grand Slam, 
to climb the tallest mountain on each continent and stand at both poles. When I was 12, I climbed the tallest mountain in Antarctica, and then I went on to climb the tallest mountain on every continent, and I became the youngest to do so. And then I went to the South Pole, but uh, they wouldn't let me skydive because there was a pretty bad accident there. Now I'm here at the North Pole, pretty excited, but getting kind of nervous about the skydive, you know. I'll be a happy camper once that, uh, once that parachute opens up. Jumping over ice is extremely dangerous. It's critical Johnny pulls his parachute at exactly the right altitude. But the featureless white landscape makes it much harder to judge the distance to the ground. During the descent, the effective air temperature will be minus 100 degrees centigrade. Johnny will be pushing himself to the limit. All the time before I do stuff, I always run through like worst case scenarios. I think of all the bad things that could happen and I run through each one individually and into what I do. So then it kind of just prepares me for the worst, which makes me nervous, but it's just what my mind always does. One and a half miles above the very top of the world. Months of planning, thousands of pounds of sponsorship and a new world record all come down to this moment. There's something about like taking that first jump that's just so awesome. And for that one moment, you know, that minute, I'm alive. During the first 10 seconds, Johnny will accelerate to 130 miles an hour, straight down. When he hits an altitude of 1,200 meters, Johnny must pull his chute. That was, that was too much fun. <laughs> Super skydiver! Yeah. Oh, hey. Good job, bro. Yeah, good job. Hey. Good. good job. Yeah. Woo! I've now reached the South Pole, uh, North Pole, and top of Everest, and the, the Three Poles Adventures Grand Slam. Oh, I couldn't be happier. Johnny has entered the record books. He's ticked off his final pole in style. And he's only 20. Thank you, thank you. Thank Excellent. You. Well done, mate. Thank you. Hey, Mom, it's Johnny. Just wanted to call you and tell you I'm still alive. I'm at the North Pole right now. Just got out in. All right. Thanks, Mom. Bye, Mom. Love you. Barneo's Ice Airport has only been open for a week, but there's already cause for concern at the end of the runway. So it's just been uh, pushed up and now it's moving. If you listen, you'll, you'll hear the sounds. I'll take the microphone over. It reminds you that uh, the polar ocean is in constant movement. This huge pressure ridge created when two sheets of ice collide is a stark reminder of the deadly power of the frozen sea. It's when you wake up in your tent with this sound under your feet, uh, on, on, under your ass. That's when you really know it's time to get up in the morning. The pressure ridges are also taking their toll on the British team. The charity trekkers have covered just 13 miles in the last two days. Awful. Not enjoyable in one bit whatsoever. Terrain I, was not what I expected. You had to stop, unpack your skis, and carry your sledges over these pressure ridges that form, and they were literally every 20 to 30 feet. You want 
What a stinking wall that was. That was horrible, wasn't it? Yeah. I'll wake up at 6.30 though. Man, 40 foot, nothing but rocks of ice. The wife thinks I'm nuts, but she understands. I think the days of raising tens and tens of thousands of pounds for running a marathon seem to have disappeared. You know, to expect people to part with hard-earned cash, you need to be seen to be putting yourself out for it. You know, you've got to be seen to be doing something extraordinary. Barneo's helicopters are increasingly busy ferrying armchair explorers to the top of the world. But finding 90 degrees north, the exact point of the pole, is not that easy. Are you there? 59999. No, that's not good enough. <laughs> well, it's one meter different. No. The pole itself does not move, but the ice above yeah. it is in constant motion. It's not right there. You have to find 90. I meant 991. This yeah. makes it impossible to stand at the precise geographic point of the North Pole for more than yes. a few seconds. There we are, 90, right there. Woo! Every point is south. After a quick spin around the world, the tourists indulge in a round of drinking. Russian vodka and American champagne in one glass. Yeah, now It's something that we couldn't pass up. It's not inexpensive. It, uh, for most of us, we're traveling halfway around the world, but it's certainly worth it. It's an amazing uh, place that very few people get to see. Barneo helps people to realize their dreams, however unusual they may be. It's a long drive contest, apparently. The Barneo staff join in too, with mixed results. <laughs> it will be growing, it will be bigger and bigger. Such type of activity, strange activity, but it means one thing. People got used uh, for area of North Pole and started to use it uh, for different uh, uh, things. It's wealthy tourists like these that keep Barneo afloat. At base camp, life is pretty comfortable. Misha has the visitors back on schedule and the staff can relax between flights. But the Arctic weather can change in an instant. The temperature is falling and a fog is rolling in. 30 miles from the pole, the charity trek is caught in the whiteout. And it's at that point that your heart just goes down, your chin goes down a bit, because you're just thinking to yourself, we might not make this now. We're, we're gonna, if this lasts more than 24 hours, there's a serious danger of us not even getting anywhere near the pole. We've got no idea what we're heading into at all. Nothing whatsoever, we can't see it. We could be going into absolute carnage. I just think it's a little bit unsafe going into that at the moment. All flights in and out of Barneo are suspended. The British team are totally exposed and alone on the ice. Team leader Alan is worried for his inexperienced group's safety. Let's try and find our way back. Right. The team retreat to their tents to wait out the storm. I've given the others an opportunity to start a game. What have we played so far? We've played countries beginning with the various letters of the alphabet, famous Stevens, which turned into famous Johns, and then there was chaos, and then we were going to play, oh no, we were playing Jack Nicholson films, and then Nigel walked out in a huff, because he said, whenever he watches a film, he can't remember what it's called. Which, yeah, to me, why even watch it? Easy Rider. For now, all they can do is sit tight and hope the weather improves. It's 
the second week of Barneo's short season. The weather has cleared and flights from the mainland bring in more tourists, scientists and adventurers. I saw huge pressure ridge just, just uh, next to the ball, yeah. It happened, and I heard noise staying in the north, I heard a noise, huge noise. The improved weather means the charity trek is also back on course. After seven days out on the ice, the British team are nearing their goal. It was a very hard day. In fact, every day has been hard. They've endured blizzards and bone-chilling temperatures, but finally they're in sight of the pole. John's kit, however, has had enough. Here we are, 200 metres away from the North Pole. My ski's broken in half, though the spares are broken as well. It's 200 metres to go and you've broken your ski. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> I uh, hobbled uh, the last 200 yards to the North Pole. It's not the most glamorous entrance. I should have sat on my arse and we would have drifted there enough now. All the guys joined together in a, in a big line, and uh, that's what this team was about. It was all to come, coming together. It was a real journey for them, and so to all walk those last sort of 10 yards together. I feel proud to have stood there with the guys and to actually have, have experienced this, this incredible, incredible place. So I've been ups upside down and underneath the sledge for most of it, but we've done it. It's absolutely fantastic. And that's Paul running around the world. <laughs> done on the, planet. <laughs> the team have reached the pole the hard way, but the struggle has been worth it. And everybody was elated. Um, I think one of the lads actually shed a tear. I think it was Alex, he was just so glad to be there. The uh, entire world is rotating beneath your feet. Fantastic. It's Fantastic. amazing, brilliant. It's amazing. Fantastic journey. It's great to be here. It's good to be here, isn't it? There was a few tears there, yeah. You know, you're, you're away from your family, you're away from your friends. You do so much thinking about life and what it's all about. Congratulations. Yeah, it's Emotional. Emotional. Good man. Just shooting flares off for the sake of it. <laughs> Just hope the polar bear doesn't come past now. We're in trouble. Fortunately for the team, they don't have to make their way back to Barneo on foot. One bundle of skis, one bundle of poles. Make sure all these shovels go in, boys. By successfully completing their trek to the pole, the team have raised £250,000 for a children's health charity. <laughs> to think that we've actually now achieved what we set out to do 14 months ago was fantastic, you know. For this crop of travellers, it's time to bid farewell to their Arctic adventure. You know, the Arctic takes a man's heart, and it's such a simple, simple but harsh environment. It's a very special place, you know, and it's a shame that we can't spend longer up here. So it's back to the UK, back to the grind. But I think it's good for the soul that you can come up here and do these things. Two, one, go! Barneo plays host to the North Pole Marathon. So tired, you don't know where you are, you don't know who you are. You want to die. A team of scientists battle the elements to measure the ice. We want to connect the dots between chemistry and snow and sea ice. And a lone walker stumbles into a special day at the pole. Sorry I'm late. I should have dressed better as well. I should have worn a tie. In that. <laughs> oh, wow. 